The Cellular and Molecular Imaging Group, or CMIG, is focused on the development and application of imaging technologies to study biological processes at the cellular and subcellular levels. We span three different labs, and even though we all have different projects, uh, we help each other out whenever we can. The imaging infrastructure includes multinuclear MRI, um, bioluminescence imaging, ultrasound, positron emission tomography, and now magnetic particle imaging. And all of our projects really take a multimodality imaging approach to cellular and molecular imaging. The best part of working in the CMIG group is that we can work with three unique labs with different backgrounds to come together to make new imaging techniques that will help patients with cancer to have better diagnoses and hopefully better treatments. At the Roberts Research Institute, our research is focused on translational imaging for disease. The beautiful thing about CMIG is that it incorporates three different labs into one and each has their own speciality. So we can go from molecular genetic biology at the bench to imaging animals in vivo to then moving that into clinical grade imaging modalities such as magnetic resonance imaging. Seeing the result of that is pretty cool. We really try to push the boundaries of where we can visualize things in the body. So when we do an experiment, we convert our clinical MRI system to a preclinical MRI system. A major focus of my project is using fluorine 19 MRI to image inflammation. And I've done this in two scenarios. The first is in imaging a stem cell rejection model. And I also image inflammation within mammary tumors. Our lab has pioneered cell tracking in Canada. In 2006, Dr. Foster was the first to publish results showing for the first time that single iron-labeled cancer cells could be visualized in vivo using MRI. This paper went on to be the number one cited paper in magnetic resonance in medicine in 2006. In November, we installed the first and only MPI system in Canada. For us, the applications of MPI that we are interested in is mainly for the tracking of cells in vivo to monitor their fates, and this can be done with several different types of cells, ranging from macrophages to cancer cells to T cells. So there's a lot of potential for the things that we want to study. The centerpiece to our molecular imaging program is the three Tesla MRI system at the Roberts Research Institute. This system has three unique capabilities. The first is that we have uh, modified to accept a high-performance grading insert. The second is its ability to image X nuclei. And the third is other infrastructure that we have added for hyperpolarization research. My research involves developing and using sodium MRI to track cancer progression uh, with treatment. So essentially we're looking at whether or not sodium can be a better indicator of treatment progression than proton. My background is electrical and biomedical engineering, so I built what we call uh, radio frequency antennas uh, that picks up uh, a sodium signal as opposed to proton signal from the body. So sodium imaging could improve patient care by allowing us to determine treatment efficacy at an earlier time point compared to proton. Since with sodium, we can specifically target the molecular changes that are occurring inside the cells as a result of treatment, rather than waiting for this mass of cells to grow or shrink, which can be quite confounding. We currently use sodium MRI in translation. There's a number of clinical questions that sodium MRI can answer. This opens up new windows to precision medicine and individualized medicine. At the Roberts Research Institute, we were one of the few facilities in the world that have apparatus capable of hyperpolarization of gases and of liquids. In the case of gases, we have infrastructure that can magnetize gases such as xenon-129 and helium-3, which are dispensed into plastic bags and then can be breathed to, me to measure pulmonary function. In addition, we can also magnetize uh, carbon-13 enriched compounds um, such as pyruvate, which then are magnetized at low temperature and high magnetic field strength. After dispensing them as uh, buffered solutions, we can inject them into animal models of disease, and then we can use rapid magnetic resonance spectroscopic imaging to follow their metabolism. Molecular genetic imaging is a subfield of molecular imaging. Um, it deals with reporter gene technologies, so building tools that allow you to track cells 
and their fate within the body. So my work on reported gene really centers around developing technologies aimed to introduce these reported genes into target cells in a manner that is safe, efficient, and importantly, specific. So the lab is focused on three main applications of reporter genes. The first, I would say, is looking and understanding cancer metastasis. And so we typically engineer the cells with new reporter genes or established reporter genes so that we can really visualize the earliest of events uh, within the metastatic cascade so that then if we apply a therapy, we might be able to know or stop the therapy at the earliest of stages. I work with a reporter gene called OATP1, which stands for Organic Anion Transporting Polypeptide 1. Um, this is a transporter expressed on the surface of cells, and it takes up a gadolinium-based contrast agent. I'm developing a clinical cell tracking system that uses safe, human-derived uh, PET and MR reporter genes. This system allows for longitudinal imaging uh, and tracking of the cells, as well as provides quantitative information um, using clinically available imaging technologies. The second focus is on cancer theranostics. So this is building DNA vectors. The ideal reporter gene vector has to accomplish a couple of things. It has to deliver the reported gene into target cells in a manner that is efficient, but also safe for the patient. Importantly, to prevent any off-target effects, we want these vectors to ideally be silent when in healthy cells and only get activated when it's in our target cells of interest, in my case, cancer cells. And it's really the correct balance of all these characteristics that really contributes to an ideal reported gene vector. The third focus is on building reporter gene tools for cell-based therapeutics, uh, with a particular focus on cancer immunotherapies. We technically engineer a single cell to start with, and then we grow that as a clonal population. So we know that all those cells will then express the reported genes that we want to look at. By tracking T cells, we hope to learn their biodistribution, their numbers in certain locations, and their persistence over time during treatment. This will help us to learn about their negative responses and their positive responses, as well as to see their behavior during negative side effects. Usually people would insert one or two reported genes um, using CRISPR technology, but we've expanded this to using three reported genes. So for our recent study, we've been inserting fluorescent, bioluminescent, and magnetic resonance imaging reported genes. So that enables us to go from imaging cells at the bench to in vivo whole body small animal imaging, and then scaling that up to magnetic resonance imaging. Um, which is more translatable for the clinic. So this is going to be this whole new area of genomic medicine where we understand the person's genetic problems and then we can correct those. But we're only going to be able to do that if we can really find out where those new editors are going and, ha and how they're working over time. In the next five years, we plan to expand the CMIG by recruiting um, new investigators who are of a unique phenotype um, which we call a cellular and molecular imaging scientist. There's someone who's trained in all aspects of cellular and molecular imaging, like the biology, the chemistry, and then multiple modalities. The best part about working with CMIG is the diverse background that everyone brings. Everybody is so encouraging and helpful, and we come from such a diverse range of backgrounds. Everyone is so knowledgeable in different fields. So the most interesting and the best part of working with CMIG is how we're willing to tackle these new imaging modalities and how we're kind of willing to push our bounds with what we can do within our lab. This is 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 our lab. Cheers!